Good morning, November 22nd, Jack's birthday. Legal drinking age in Canada is 19, or in the province of Ontario, I should say, and Jack's 19 today, so Jack, don't get arrested. Today is going to be kind of an update video and probably will feed into some other corn harvesting videos. I'm not sure yet. I'll be honest, it's been a marathon. It's been a little grueling. I'm tired. i uh, kind of been bouncing around, you know, four or five hours of good sleep the last week. In my latest video, we got back at corn uh, after an epic snowfall. Uh, with that video of uh, snow harvest that you could see and then kind of an update video there my last one most recent one we did get back at combine and corn so last weekend November 16th and 17th we went crazy and got 80 acres of corn harvested which is pretty good for us because we have to wait on the dryer so it was a good weekend and I know in that video I mentioned that we were maybe going to have bad weather on Monday of this week. We actually ended up not getting any rain and we combined corn Monday night. And then we started combining again Tuesday, we combined Wednesday, Thursday, today's Friday, it rained Thursday night. So, But it was such a uh, compressed, long hour days, I had no time to film or edit. So my apologies. So I'm trying to do an update video kind of uh, today and likely get some more corn footage of harvesting uh, this weekend again. Uh, we have done quite well. We're down to 140 acres of corn uh, to harvest, which is still going to take three or four days probably uh, with drying and hauling at home. But uh, with the snow that melted, because we had a, probably a total of two feet, uh, the ground was not nice so we ended up on Tuesday Wednesday Tuesday and Wednesday we mucked 80 no 60 acres off and uh, it wasn't pretty and uh, I was pretty stressed out about it because we don't like doing that but uh, it was a field that was kind of back in the boondocks and it was one of those things where if we don't get it now we might not get it again until hardcore freeze up and that's not in the forecast so we just made the executive decision that we would kind of muck it off and we'll fix it either in this fall yet or in the spring likely the spring uh, so that kind of helped us keep going and then some of our other fields that are tile drained because uh, this that 60 acres wasn't uh, actually Tuesday night and actually no Tuesday Wednesday Wednesday night we moved into one of those and it was actually really good and then yesterday we got combined at first thing in the morning and got things filled up the weapon filled before it rained so that's kind of where we are right now this morning's job is moving grain around we have to empty the dryer the storage underneath the drying chamber uh, looking at it here you can see it get it to work here this is not showing up very well. Ah, uh, yeah. The area here is full. So we have to move that dry corn out into another storage bin so we have more room to dry corn because uh, there's still some in the wet bin and a few wagons that are still full from yesterday. Um, so we're going to do that. And it's pretty simple. I just got to hit enable control, start the Jenny. Jenny fires up, it's running. Controls, leg start. Well, I have to pick the bin I want empty. So dryer bin, leg start. Start the pit. Start the bin on load. And we're moving corn. Simple as that. So right now we're transferring corn from the dryer bin into this bin right here. 
And the issue that we have to do as well is that this bin here has wheat in it. So we have to move the wheat out of that bin and put it into not, not that bin, but the one right there uh, because we have wheat in it already. So there's about 10,000 bushels of wheat in there that we have to get out so we can put dry corn in that bin, that bin there is already full and by the end of this morning that one's going to be full so we have to get that one big 40,000 bushel bin emptied so we have room for more dry corn because we got roughly probably 30,000 bushels of corn or a bit more to dry yet so that will actually fill that last big bin and then we're done for the year until we got to start shipping. So one of the, the issues that Ontario and Quebec corn farmers have run into is no propane. Uh, so to dry corn, uh, you either need two sources of heat. One would be natural gas uh, for the burner or propane for the burner to create the heat to get rid of the moisture in the corn. And we're on our farm, we're very lucky to have natural gas down our road. So. Uh, we have a pipeline that basically comes off the road and connects to our dryer and we don't have to worry about really delivery of natural gas at all because it comes via the pipeline and we're good that way. However, uh, a lot of friends of mine use propane and propane is delivered by trucks and stored in tanks just like a barbecue tank uh, for propane barbecue. Just these tanks are really big. Uh, but uh, they most now in Ontario and I think Quebec probably have all received notice farmers that they will no longer be receiving propane uh, so they cannot dry any more wet corn and they're stopped and they're done harvesting. The issue that we have is not really a supply issue with propane it's the fact we can't get it delivered. Uh, uh, CN, a rail company in Canada here has gone on strike uh, and because of that there's 3,000 employees that walked off the job because they were in a strike position and they're not working right now so the rail lines aren't going and therefore uh, the rail system that delivered propane is not delivering propane anymore because it's not running so there is a very limited supply of propane and it's being left for more critical Things like home heating, uh, nursing homes, hospitals, stuff like that, and water treatment plants because they take priority over farmers getting the corn off in the field, which I understand. Um, but it's really, really frustrating for these people. And I feel really uh, bad for them because 2019 has been a year of struggle uh, from a farming standpoint and row crop. Uh, we struggled to get the crop in. Uh, it went dry and now we're struggling to get the crop off and we're actually dealing with very high moistures in our, our crop that we're harvesting. Uh, there's some farmers south of us that still have soybeans out in the field, which is not, uh, not, not good at all. Uh, so this whole issue is just really, I don't know, like increase the stress level tenfold for these uh, farmers and I feel just horrible for them because they're trying to get a crop off that they can't really get off now and because uh, they can't dry it at home. So their only options are either to leave it in the field uh, until the strike is over and we can get propane or they can get propane delivered or they take it to an elevator and uh, you know they're kind of going to pay more for drying because it's always cheaper to dry at home if you have the infrastructure to do it. So uh, just kind of an added burden to an already stressful situation for the harvest of 2019. So it's getting a little cold and I'm just unloading some wagons from the other night and try to get this dryer going and get it emptied out so that we can actually hopefully combine some corn tomorrow is the plan depending on the weather, but everything's got to get goofy and crappy out here. We, uh, Change the 
down to the end. Stop the leg, that's fine. I'll get this system figured out someday. Overhead. Idiot. I need an idiot switch to tell me where the over where the distributor is because I keep forgetting to put it back to the overhead. Glad I came out. I got the aeration fan going but it's about 12 o'clock at night and the dryer just ran out of wet corn so shutting her down for the night everything I'm gonna shut the generator down and hopefully go at corn tomorrow and we'll have a good day because Everything is empty.